One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and I thought we'd do a little bit different today, and we will do a little VO after you look at my computer screen here, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be doing a full First round NFL mock draft, and I know now you got players in slots. This is not my mock draft right now. I haven't even started. Uh, for example, you can you can move these up and you can move these down. So we'll be moving some people and making this Trebe's own mock draft because especially this pick right here, your boy is going to change that. That's for sure. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be my full first round mock draft. If you guys want to join me live on Twitch, twitch.com forward slash Talks to watch the draft with me and my buddies. We are going to be having a mock draft competition. Whoever can pick the most, game, uh, most picks right, as well as some other rules with trades and players going to the right team, even if the trade was incorrect. We have a point system for that as well. It's going to be a good time. We're going to be having fun. We're going to be watching the draft. We're going to be really, really competitive, and it will be a good time, and it's going to be way worth your time to come out, ladies and gentlemen. But without further ado, let's dive into the mock draft that we are going to be using for this competition. Again, we had to use my draft site. I'm going to exit out of these right now because this was what I was trying to do, which was my draft network, which was being so good to me lately, but... For some reason today just would not load, so we are using this website to do our mock draft, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, we have the first overall selection, the Arizona Cardinals. I have gone back and forth on this one a lot, just like how I imagine the Cardinals are going back and forth on this pick a lot. So that being said, there have been more reports coming out every single day that it doesn't look like Kyler Murray is going to be the guy. With that being said, I don't think Kyler Murray goes first overall anymore. I was a guy that thought that, but as of right now, I don't think that is the move. I think the Arizona Cardinals will select from the number one spot, and they will be selecting Quinn Williams, defensive end out of Alabama. He is clearly the best defensive end in this year's draft and one of the best if not the best players in this draft as well so the Cardinals being able to snag up Quinn Williams is a huge huge get for the Cardinals and one they should be happy about so Quinn Williams going first overall to the Arizona Cardinals coming up next we got the San Francisco 49ers at number two this one is gonna be a little bit more obvious if the Niners do not select Nick Boza, I don't really know what's going on. Because that he will be the best player available, probably the best player in this draft. But, you know, the Cardinals have been linked more to Quinn Williams than uh, Nick Bosa. So, Quinn Williams will be the first overall selection with Nick Bosa going to the 49ers with the second overall selection. Coming up next, we got the New York Jets. The Jets are going to take a chance on outside linebacker Josh Allen. You know, the the common first four picks, I think, are going to be about right, about where the draft is going to be and where the draft takes place. But now it's where everything gets interesting here. As you got the Oakland Raiders at four with their first draft pick of the draft. What do they do? Who do they select, ladies and gentlemen? And I don't even think I'm going to move that name there. I'm going to keep Kyler Murray going to the Oakland Raiders at the fourth overall position. I think the Raiders snag up Kyler Murray because you never know too much on how the Raiders really feel with Derek Carr. So bringing in Kyler Murray, that's going to be uh, an instant, uh, not necessarily impact, but instant excitement to your organization, instant, you know, mood of happiness that your team has because they have a new quarterback in there and he's very, very exciting, a former Heisman winner, and this will pump a lot of Raiders fans up when Kyler Murray falls to the Raiders at pick number four. Now my dark horse pick of this draft is that two quarterbacks go back 
to back, ladies and gentlemen. I think Tampa Bay is a sleeper team to be selecting a quarterback so Bruce Arians could work with a young gunslinger that he knows has potential because Jameis Winston has done a whole lot of nothing his whole career. He hasn't made the playoffs once. He's been doing a whole lot of nothing. So that is why Dwayne Haskins, ladies and gentlemen, is going to go number five overall to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And don't say I didn't tell you so, because when it happens, you'll be like, damn, Treve, you're right. Dwayne Haskins to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up next, we have the New York Giants. The Giants have a lot of, have a lot of options here at the six overall pick you got montez sweat you got devin white you got dewan taylor you got ed oliver you got all of that so with dwayne haskins shockingly being off the board what do the giants do with their selection here i think they go best available and i think they take bon Tez Sweat. Taking Montez Sweat here will improve your depth on defense and he is the best player available so the fans in general cannot get too mad because Montez Sweat is going to be a great player. He's going to be a good overall player and going to the New York Giants I think will fit in well whether he is a starter or a depth pickup. The Giants they get one of the better defense events in this year's draft class and that's three tight end defense events in the top six. Coming up next, number seven, the Jacksonville Jaguars, ladies and gentlemen. What are the Jags going to do? They have a lot of options, maybe even some options that go a little bit down the way. Yes, in fact, a lot of bit down the way. That's why I think the Jags are going to be selecting Ed Oliver, defensive tackle out of Houston. Now, this is one that when the draft process started, I would hate. I would hate it. I'd be like, like, we need more help on the defensive side of the ball. But they do need help on defensive side of the ball as far as depth goes. And Ed Oliver being probably the best interior defensive lineman in this year's draft, he is going to be a good fit for Jacksonville and a good depth signing, a good pickup. So when... Uh, Avery Jones or Marcel Darius do get tired. We got Ed L. Oliver and Taven Bryan coming in, filling in those roles and doing a really, really good job. And that's why we got Ed Oliver going number seven to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now the Detroit Lions, I'm not going to move their pick any. I think the Lions take inside linebacker Devin White. An instant impact player on the defensive side of the ball. They won't be taking Ed Oliver because the Jags just snuck him up. So Devin White to the Detroit Lions at the 8th overall selection. Now coming in at the ninth selection, the Buffalo Bills, they will not be selecting J1 Taylor. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, if I could find the boy on here, I actually had a bold take earlier, and that is that Nikhil Henry is going to be the first wide receiver off the board, and he's going to go ninth overall to the Buffalo Bills. I know that's a bold take and you guys are probably looking at me like what the hell but crazy shit like this happens every single draft and I would hate myself if I didn't try and do a bold take. So Nikhil Henry will be the, Nikhil Harry, not Nikhil Henry, sorry. Nikhil Harry, he's going to be the first wide receiver off the board and he's going to go to the Buffalo Bills. DK Metcalf is going to be shocked. He's going to be like, what the hell even happened? Nikhil Harry is the new wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills, who just signed TJ Yeldon, by the way. So congrats to TJ Yeldon for finally, finally finding a different squad. Coming up next, we have the Denver Broncos. The Broncos, they have a lot of things they can upgrade. This is maybe a Drew Locke territory pick. This could be a Drew Locke territory pick. Or a Jawan Taylor, even, you know, to protect Joe Flacco. That's also a pick that is more than you know it's more than reliable that's probably a decent pickup in this sense but what we're going to be doing is we are going to be hmm, what are we going to be doing here we're going to stick no we're going to go with we are going to go with klein Farrell defensive no no we're not we're going to go defensive end brian burns out of florida state to the denver Broncos ladies and gentlemen another bit of a bold take they do have tons of pass rushing help as they do and uh you know what no 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 we're gonna do this instead Devin Bush Jr. Devin Bush Jr. is gonna go all the way up here 
and he is going to be selected by the Denver Broncos. Inside linebacker help him, Von Miller, Bradley Chubb, everybody on Denver's defense. Just make it even more elite than it needs to be as Devin Bush gets selected to the Denver Broncos. The Bengals, they need offensive line help, and they need it bad, and they are happy that Mr. Jawan Taylor is still on the board in the Cincinnati Bengals pick up Jawan Taylor to be their offensive tackle after they let their uh, Ogabaye, who to the Jacksonville Jaguars, so they need another guy to come in, and Jawan Taylor will be that guy, the guy that uh, the Jags thought, everybody thought the Jags was gonna, were going to take, but the Bengals ended up taking him, so that's kind of kind of funny. So coming up next, we got the Green Bay Packers. The Packers do not have a tight end to throw to, and that's why this is going to be scary. We're going to get TJ Hawkinson in the Green Bay Packers offense playing with Aaron freaking Rodgers, and that is going to be insane, ladies and gentlemen, to see TJ Hawkinson's career develop under Green Bay, under Aaron Rodgers, under all of that. That is going to be fun to watch. He's going to be one hell of a player, and he's going to be one hell of a time to watch during his time in Green Bay. And I am very, very excited. Now, at number 13, the Miami Dolphins are going to be selecting. And a lot of people want to point to quarterback for their first-round pick, but I just I don't see outside of Murray and Haskins, Locke or Jones really going in the first round. I just don't see it. So with that being said, we're going to go a little bit down the line so we can so we can find our guy here. Where is our guy? Our guy is right here, Jonah Williams. Jonah Williams will be the pick for the Miami Dolphins here at number 13. They need an offensive lineman. They need help anywhere they can get it. So if you're going to roll and tank with uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, you're going to need to protect him at least a little bit. So that is why we are going to be going with Jonah Williams at the 13th overall pick for the Miami Dolphins. Now we got the Atlanta Falcons chilling here at the 14th overall pick. You got a lot of good defensive tackles. You got a lot of good defensive ends on the board. You also got uh, one corner, really, and uh, Greedy Williams, who is still on the board. So what are we going to do? I don't think we're going to change this mock too much. I think we're going to just have the Falcons select Brian Burns. How are we going to have him select Brian Burns? I don't know. I want him to go offensive line here, and Cody Ford's looking at me weird, and I think that is what we're going to do. We're going to go with an offensive lineman to the Atlanta Falcons to help protect Matt Ryan and move him up to number 14 for the Atlanta Falcons. Now the Redskins, what are they going to be doing, ladies and gentlemen? Are they going to be taking a quarterback? Are they going to be trying to look for more help? No, they're going to take one of the most explosive players in this year's draft, and they are going to be selecting DK Metcalf, 15th overall. Metcalf is going to fall all the way to the Redskins, and it's going to be bad because the Redskins, as of now, don't have a quarterback, so no one's going to be throwing the ball to DK Metcalf. So this might not be the best-case scenario for Metcalf, uh, for landing spot at least, but going to Washington, you know, this late, and hopefully they can pick up a quarterback in the near future, maybe even trade for Josh Rosen, but in this mock draft, that won't happen because they took Quinn Williams, so they're going to really have to bank on the fact of really, really decent quarterback play so DK Metcalf can be brought along. Coming up next, we got the Carolina, Carolina Falcons, the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers are on the board here, ladies and gentlemen, and I almost want them to take an offensive lineman again. We got Chris Lindstrom still on the board. And you know what? We are gonna do just that. Andre Dillard. No, they don't need they don't need an OT. They need a they need an interior guy. We're gonna go Chris Lindstrom, offensive guard out of Boston College to the Carolina Panthers, ladies and gentlemen. So after the Giants selected who did the Giants select, ladies and gentlemen? Who did we have them pick? And we had the Giants selecting Montez Sweat here at the 17th overall selection, which uh, in most of my mock drafts, actually I had DK fallen all the way to the Giants, 
but I it just it did not it didn't happen for this one. But the the Giants are gonna have to pick a franchise wide receiver, or at least a wide receiver that knows how to play, and that's what they're gonna be doing with AJ Brown. AJ Brown, who's a guy I usually project in the Jaguars mock drafts going in the second round, his draft stock has been raising steadily every single day. So I could see him going into the first round, and he's gonna be going to the New York football. Giants, ladies and gentlemen. So, A.J. Brown, the 17th overall pick to the New York Giants. Now we're on to the Minnesota Vikings. Who do the Vikings select? The Vikings are going to go out and get the best offensive tackle in this year's draft. No cap at all. And they are going to be selecting Andre Dillard. Andre Dillard is going to go 18th overall to the Minnesota Vikings to protect Kirk Cousins and get a future Hall of Famer at the offensive tackle position. Again, not enough good words to be said about Andre Dillard. Andre Dillard is going to be one hell of a fit there in Minnesota, and he's going to be a baller. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Andre Dillard is going to be a fantastic player in the NFL. Coming in at number 19, we got the Tennessee Titans, ladies and gentlemen. And I am not going to let this pick move. At the point that Brian Burns has already fallen, I don't think anybody is going to pass up on him. So that's why the Titans will end up selecting Brian Burns. They don't necessarily need an edge rusher right now, but they do need the depth. And Brian Burns gives them that opportunity. So he is going to be selected at number 19 to the Tennessee Titans, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up next at the 20th position, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers' defense and pass rush has been struggling lately, and they have an opportunity to improve both with this pick. So who are they going to go with? You got Byron Murphy, you got Greedy Williams, you still got Klein Farrell, and you still got Christian Wilkes, Wilkins at the defensive tackle position. With this selection, we are going to be thinking long-term. We're thinking corner, and we are thinking Greedy Williams. Greedy Williams is going to go 20th overall to the Pittsburgh Steelers to hold down their secondary alongside Joe uh, Joe Hayden. Almost said Joe Thomas. Joe Hayden. Coming up next, we have the 21st selection, the Seattle Seahawks. They do need help on the offensive line, but that is how it is almost every single year. I think they should go playmaker, and I don't think they should go safety. I think they should take probably the second best quarter in this draft and go with Byron Murphy. If that's right, two corners back to back, two studs back to back. Two guys that I think will be in this league for a long time, will be talked about for a long time as well. So Byron Murphy, he goes number 21 overall to the Seattle Seahawks, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up next, we got the Seattle Seahawks. They could always use help on the offensive line. That's why this pick is a little bit too obvious. We're going to go Greg Little. Greg Little is going to go number 22. Oh, no, never mind. We are. I'm so dumb. I was still thinking we were on the Seahawks. No, Byron Murphy. Duh, I just got hyped about that. The Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens, they need, they need linebacking help, and they need some wide receiver help as well. Uh, as we look at who's available. And you know, that that's an interesting one right there. And I think that's that's what's going to happen here. Hakeem Butler. We're going to have Hakeem Butler going 22 to the Baltimore Ravens, ladies and gentlemen. The Ravens need a wide receiver, a deep threat. And that's what Hakeem Butler brings to the table. Honestly, probably the second, third best wide receiver in this year's draft. He was drafted so as well. So I could honestly see that. And it's a good pick. In my opinion, at number 22 for Hakeem Butler to the Baltimore Ravens. Coming up next, we have the Houston Texans. The Texans are going to be selecting Noah Faint. Noah Faint is going to be going to the Houston Texans. The Texans have not had a tight end in such a long time, and they are going to be getting a reliable, young, athletic tight end in Noah Faint. And it's going to be really exciting and really, really fun to watch, ladies and gentlemen. So Noah Faint to the Houston Texans at number 23 overall. Coming up next, we got the Oakland Raiders with their third and, f or no, second, their second pick. Their third pick? Their third pick in this mock draft. And what do the Raiders do in this one? The Raiders are going to take running back Josh Jacobs. I think Josh Jacobs is the only running back that goes in the first round. This running back class is not necessarily deep. But with Marshawn Lynch probably not coming back, they should address 
address this issue as soon as they can, and they have an opportunity to do that in the first round, and I think they do that by drafting Josh Jacobs, who is basically unanimously touted as the best running back in this year's draft class. So the 24th overall pick is Josh Jacobs running back to the Oakland Raiders. Coming up next, we have the Philadelphia Eagles, ladies and gentlemen. What do the Eagles need help on? What should the Eagles be drafting? They could be drafting Jason Peters' replacement. They could take a guy like Greg Little. Rashawn Gary still on the board as well, so is Klein Farrell. And they have that opportunity as well. They got DeAndre Baker. They do have Deontay Thompson, who I guess his draft stock has just been rising, so I didn't think I'd ever see him that high. So who are the Eagles going to be selecting? The Eagles will take Greg Little. Greg Little will be there to be the replacement of Jason Peters, unless I could find one guy that I'm looking for in particular here. God, man, these safeties. Yeah, that, there we go. Freaking, that's who they're, that's the Eagles selection here. Jonathan Abram, safety out of Mississippi State, who in my opinion, at least, I thought was the best. I thought he was the best safety in this year's draft class, but I guess no one else has thought that. So Jonathan Abram, Abram, he's going to go to the Philadelphia Eagles at the 25th selection. Here at 26, the Colts are on the board, and what do the Colts need to do here? The Colts have an opportunity to keep on solidifying their offensive line and take a guy like Greg Little, but they also really need interior pass interior pass rushing help and edge rushing help. So right here, they are going to take Rashawn Gary with the 26th overall pick, a guy that fell and fell and fell in this draft, but finally finds a home with the Indianapolis Colts. Now it's time for the final pick for the Oakland Raiders, and this is one that I don't think, uh, yeah, you know, uh, we're going to go Klein Farrell. Klein Farrell is going to be the 27th selection for the Oakland Raiders in this year's draft. They've got a really good haul, and hopefully this is the haul that could turn it around for the Oakland Raiders. And now coming up, we got the LA Chargers, and I'm not going to move anything. I'm going to have Greg Little go to the San, I mean the Los Angeles Chargers that need help on the offensive line. Greg Little, best available, just makes sense, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up next, we got the Kansas City Chiefs. They need help on defense. They need help on defense. And they're going to take a guy that has a huge ceiling and has the potential to be one of the best players in this year's draft. And it's scary because he's going to the Chiefs. We're talking Dexter Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence, who had the knee injury problem, but he is going to be falling and falling in this year's draft. And he finds a home with the Kansas City Chiefs. And boy, oh boy, that right there is scary ladies and gentlemen i have no idea if dexter lawrence pans out and he's part of this chiefs team the chiefs might just win the next three super bowls they're going to be an exciting bunch to watch next year so coming up next we got the 30th overall pick we got the green bay packers ladies and gentlemen what are we going to have the packers do in this pick well you see they need help they still need a t they drafted their tight end and tj hawkinson earlier in the draft so what would they do here at the 30th overall selection we are going to have them take christian wilkins a defensive tackle that has fallen all the way to number 30 here in our draft ladies and gentlemen so that just makes a lot of sense just drafting the best player available a lot of teams use that strategy and that's who he would be is the best player available Coming up next, we got the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams, I think, need some help in their... Man, in their, they, I don't even know what the Rams need help at, man. They need, they need a little bit of safety help. They need a little bit of defensive help here. And, who? let's see here. We're going to have the Los Angeles Rams select... Uh, what are we going to do here? We're going to have them select... Jack Tillery, a defensive tackle, just to add more depth on their team. Oh, almost. Oh, I did swap those two around. Okay. So, uh, Jerry Tillery to add some depth at the defensive tackle spot. And I think that is a good pick for the Rams. And coming in at number 32, the New England Patriots select Marquise Brown. Hollywood Brown, wide receiver. The New England Patriots close the draft by taking another wide receiver. The, early on in the draft process, people were saying, 
don't be surprised to not see a lot of receivers go in the first round. I had three or four go in the first round, ladies and gentlemen. So this was my 2019 full first round NFL mock draft. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Dems are just straight facts. Also, this draft might have a little bit of tweaks come draft day, but come make sure you come out to Twitch, twitch.com forward slash Troop Talks to watch the live stream, ladies and gentlemen, of me and my boys going live, and we are competing to not do something. So we need a, we need a punishment, so if you've got this far in the video and you still are watching and you need to think of a punishment, comment one down below. We will probably do it because you'll probably be the only one that comments. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you again so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.